Ready to see some jaw-dropping archaeology? It's what we do best on our channel, so we've got you covered. Join us for a tour of some of the most amazing archaeological discoveries from all over the world. From the seemingly mundane to the outright bizarre, we've got it all. So buckle up and get ready for an adventure through time and history. The dramatic Ramesseum Papyrus is a highly significant historical document, as it's the oldest surviving illustrated papyrus roll in the world. The text is written in linear hieroglyphs and depicts a ceremonial play celebrating the coronation or said festival of Senesret, the second pharaoh of the 12th dynasty. The papyrus roll dates back to around 1980 BCE and was discovered at the Ramesseum, a memorial temple complex in Thebes, Egypt, built by Pharaoh Ramses II. During the reign of Senesret, Egypt was at the height of its power, with advancements in technology, art, and architecture. The said festival was a significant event, celebrated every 30 years, and intended to rejuvenate the pharaoh's strength and power. The festival included a series of rituals, culminating in the pharaoh's symbolic union with the goddess of fertility Hathor. The dramatic Ramesseum papyrus is believed to have been produced for one of these festivals. The papyrus roll's illustrations are arranged in a style akin to a modern comic strip format, with the pharaoh depicted multiple times in the role of Horus, the ancient Egyptian god of kingship. It seems Senesret took the role of being a god-king seriously. Next, we have the Veletri Sarcophagus. This magnificent piece, crafted between 140 and 150 CE, is a true masterpiece of Roman art, showcasing not only Roman, but also Greek and Asiatic influences. The vivid depictions of Hercules, Pluto, Persephone, Cerberus, Neptune, Jupiter, and other mythical creatures in elaborate columned registers and classic spiral fluted Doric and Ionic columns make this sarcophagus a true work of art. The attention to detail is simply astonishing. With 86 human and divine figures, including Caryatids and Telamons, 43 mythical creatures, and 40 animals, all telling a unique story of the afterlife. And the roof of the sarcophagus is adorned with large pediments decorated with marble, snake-like garlands of fruit, and botanic garlands in stunning 3D, a truly unique feature. The Veletri sarcophagus is a testament to the new ideas of life after death that emerged from the many growing cults and religions during the Antonine dynasty. It was undoubtedly created for someone of high importance in social status, making it an even more fascinating glimpse into ancient Roman culture. It's just a shame that we don't know who that person was. Now we go to England to examine the incredible Bursford Hope Cross. This 9th century Byzantine reliquary cross is a true masterpiece, crafted from gold, enamel, and silver gilt. Measuring approximately 3.5 by 2.5 by 0.7 inches, this cross is a marvel of design, featuring a hinge at the top and a catch at the bottom to allow for a small object to be placed inside. On one side, you'll see Christ on the cross, flanked by the Virgin Mary and Joseph and bearing faint Greek inscriptions on the arms. On the other side, you'll find the Virgin Mary with busts of St. Peter, Andrew, John the Baptist, and Paul. Legend has it that the artifact once held a piece of the true cross, making it a truly holy relic. It's finished with beautiful cloison enameling, which uses thin strips of gold or other metal to outline a shape before filling it with glass and pigment and firing and polishing it. This technique gives the cross a breathtaking beauty. The Bursford Hope Cross was likely one of the first of its kind and was worn as a pendant by pious individuals. It's been held by the Victoria and Albert Museum since 1886, and its significance and beauty have only grown with time. An April 2023 study on the ivory bag rings found in Anglo-Saxon women's graves has shed more light on the material's origin and significance. These rings were typically worn as pendants at the hip and formed the opening of an organic bag worn at the waist along with other objects, such as tools and knives. The study confirms that the ivory used in these rings came from contemporary African elephants, which was a rare and expensive material in early Anglo-Saxon England. 
It was seen as a display of wealth and status to wear such rings. Previously, there had been debates among scholars on the ivory source, with mammoth and walrus ivory being the most likely options. However, the study employed several techniques, such as radiocarbon dating, zooarchaeology by mass spectronomy, and strontium isotope analysis to confirm the material definitely comes from African elephants. The researchers believe that the ivory was traded by the Kingdom of Aksum, which dominated trade in the Red Sea after the fall of Rome. Evidence of ivory working has been found at Aksum sites in the 6th century, supporting this theory. Prepare to be amazed by the beauty and mystery of the Brescia casket. This incredible late 4th century ivory box, possibly a reliquary, is a true gem of early Christian art. The box is so well preserved that it's hard to believe it's almost 1,700 years old. The 36 intricate images on the box represent the evolving Christian art of the period, and they've left art historians puzzled for centuries. Despite their best efforts, they still can't agree on the date, use, provenance, or meaning of the box. What we do know is that it was likely made in Milan, a hub of early Christianity, and might have been used to house the relics of two Milanese Roman martyr saints, Gervasius and Protasius. The Brescia casket has a fascinating history. It was used as a reliquary in the Middle Ages and even played a special role in the Easter liturgy of the convent where it was kept. During the Napoleonic invasion, it was taken to the Biblioteca Carignana in Brescia, and it wasn't until 1928 that the box was restored and reassembled. Now, you can witness this masterpiece in all its glory at the Museo di Santa Giuliana at San Salvatore in Brescia, Italy. The Shrine of St. Lockton's Arm is a fascinating piece of medieval Irish artistry that dates back to the early 10th century. This unique reliquary is crafted from wood and metal and is shaped like an outstretched forearm with a clenched fist. Unusually, the shrine is thought to have served as a talisman or battle standard, carried onto battlefields with Irish armies. The metal plates are adorned with intricate engravings that depict zoomorphic and foliate designs, reflecting the Viking influence on Irish art during this period. The inscriptions on the shrine are also fascinating featuring prayers for the commissioner and metal workers, as well as the name of the commissioner, Tad Mac Carthic. The shrine is one of the finest examples of medieval Irish ecclesiastical metalwork and is known to have once held the arm bone of St. Lochton. Very little is known about the saint, other than he opened monasteries in Ireland during the 7th century after being born in Cork. After being rediscovered in the mid-18th century, the shrine changed hands several times, ultimately landing in the collection of the National Museum of Ireland in Dublin. In a similar vein, the Moylock Belt Shrine is no ordinary accessory. It's an 8th century Irish reliquary designed in the shape of a belt, complete with four hinged bronze segments that encase strips of plain leather. This unique piece of early Christian Irish art is a treasure trove of intricate decoration, with enamel, cross-shaped glass medallions, cast bronze medallions, stamped silver inlays, animal and bird heads, and spiral patterns. But the belt isn't just a work of art. It's believed to have held a leather girdle belonging to a saint, making it a valuable relic container. The identity of the saint is unknown. Discovered by a turf cutter in County Sligo, the belt shrine quickly made its way into the National Museum of Ireland, where it remains on permanent display to this day. Some art historians believe that the belt may have been worn by people who believed it would heal their illnesses, while others suggest that it could have been worn by people seeking the favor of the mysterious saint. Regardless of its function, there's no denying that the Moylock belt shrine is a one-of-a-kind masterpiece. No other Irish belt shrine has survived to the present day. The Lothair Crystal is also known as the Lothar Crystal and the Susanna Crystal, but takes its best-known name from the fact that it was discovered in what was once the Kingdom of Lotharingia in northwest Europe. Most of the former kingdom is now Luxembourg. The scenes etched into the stunning crystal, which was carved somewhere between the years 855 and 869, are inspired by the biblical story of Susanna in the Book of Daniel. The frame around it was added during the 15th century. There are eight scenes in total, 
showing Susanna being condemned for adultery before the intervention of Daniel, who exposed the false witnesses of the elders, and then has them executed by stoning. Accompanying inscriptions in Latin explain each scene and are taken from the Vulgate Bible. The history of the artifact's ownership and the identity of the person who carved it are unknown, as there are no records of its existence prior to the 10th century. It was damaged when it was thrown into the Meuse River by French revolutionary forces in 1793 and is now held in the British Museum. The Crown of Princess Blanche is an exceptional work of art steeped in history and opulence. Dating back to 1370 to 1380, this remarkable crown is the oldest surviving royal crown ever to have been used in England. It's crafted from shimmering gold and adorned with exquisite diamonds, rubies, emeralds, sapphires, enamel, and pearls. Measuring seven inches in both height and diameter, it's an awe-inspiring sight to behold. The crown has been in the possession of the House of Wittelsbach since 1402, gifted to them upon the marriage of Princess Blance of England to Louis III, Elector Palatine. Today, this magnificent crown is a highlight of the Munich Residence Treasury, where it has been proudly displayed since 1782. The crown's design is its true masterpiece, with 12 hexagonal rosettes forming the base, each topped by a lily. The stems and lilies alternate in size and height, intricately jeweled with versions of the fleur-de-lis. The hexagons are adorned with enameled white flowers, overlaid onto translucent blue or red backgrounds, with a sapphire set in the center of each hexagon. This unparalleled creation has been lauded as one of the finest achievements of the Gothic goldsmiths, a testament to the skill and artistry of its unknown creator. In April 2023, Mexican officials announced a major victory with the recovery of an Olmec statue known as Monument 9. The one-ton sculpture dates back to the middle pre-classic period of 800 to 400 BCE and features an earth monster, a common motif in Olmec art with enormous gaping jaws, which symbolize a gateway to the underworld. Measuring six feet tall and five feet wide, the statue was allegedly stolen from the Chalcatzingo archeological site in Mexico and smuggled to the United States in the 1950s. How anyone smuggles a one-ton artifact anywhere is beyond us, so its journey to the U.S. remains shrouded in mystery, but it's now been seized by the Antiquities Trafficking Unit of the Manhattan District Attorney's Office and is set to be repatriated to Mexico. Monument 9 is a key piece for research on Olmec iconography, and its recovery is being celebrated by archaeologists and cultural heritage enthusiasts alike. The incident is also being hailed in its native country as a testament to Mexico's commitment to repatriating its cultural heritage and preserving its unique history for future generations. Turning our attention to the topic of unusual ancient inscriptions, a very strange one was found inside a 2,400-year-old ancient Etruscan helmet in November 2021. The finding is considered to be so significant that some historians think it might finally shed new light on the military organizations and capabilities of these pre-Roman inhabitants of Italy. It's amazing that it's taken so long to find the inscription. The helmet itself has been in the hands of archaeologists for almost a century after being discovered in the Osteria di Volci necropolis in 1928. On the face of it, the lettering doesn't seem very significant. It's etched onto the helmet's neck protector and reads Harnst. This might be a reference to Arnhem, which is an Etruscan battle camp where soldiers met on the eve of the Battle of Sentino, according to the 2,100-year-old writings of the historian Tito Livio. How Tito Livio could be so sure of events that happened 200 years before he was born is unknown, but if the link between the helmet and the battle could be proven, it would be the first direct physical evidence that it actually took place. On the other hand, Harnst could simply be the name of the helmet's owner. Our final fantastic find is the Minoan Molds of Palaikastro. In a way, these artifacts represent the dawn of the age of mass production. The 3,300-year-old molds are made of schist and were used as casting molds to make thousands of plaques featuring complex symbols and figures. Designs that appear on the molds include double axes, 
opium poppy flowers, women dancing with their arms raised, the horns of consecration, and a solar disk that may have been used to mass-produce a primitive tool for telling the time and predicting eclipses. The molds were found together, close to Palaikastro in Crete in 1899. Today, you'll find them in the Heraklion Archaeological Museum in Crete. The strangest of all the designs on the molds is that of a spoked, geared object of unknown purpose. The most popular theory is that this, too, is a design based on the sun and used for either predicting the seasons or telling the time, but we don't have enough knowledge of the era or of the culture to say so with any certainty. The Minoans left several incredible artifacts behind when they disappeared from history, but they didn't leave any instruction manuals to help us to get to know them better. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.